Welcome to another episode of Home Staging Tips. I am your host, Kasha McDaniel, and today we're going to talk about kids' bedrooms and staging them. Now, homeowners hire me to transform their home into wow and get it sold now, but how are we going to wow them with kids' bedrooms? We're not going to try and go for the wow, that room is messy. That's not the wow we want. We want the wow. My little girl, when she was three, we were finally build, getting a new house in Virginia and we found this colonial home and it had this four poster bed in it. And she walks in and she's like, oh, wow, this is my room. This is the princess, the ultimate princess room. That's the wow we're trying to go for, okay? So we're gonna talk about that and I'd love to share some tips with you today on how exactly we're gonna do that. But before we go into that, I do wanna share with you something really exciting I wanna share and that is the Best of the Pines contest. I am one of the folks in the interior decorator category and I would love to get your vote for that category. Um, there are a lot of other friends that are in there too, other businesses that are fantastic. Um, I know PMI, which is the pest management guys, I use those for my house um, for pest management, ant control and all that stuff. They've helped us with a bee issue in our house. Yeah, when they built a nest. Yeah, they fixed it. Oh my gosh, it was fantastic. Um, spot on floor and carpet cleaning. They have, after a hurricane in um, several times in North Carolina, it won the, the house that we were renting at the time, got flooded. So they had to suck out all the water and not keep it for, you know, so it wasn't so smelly and nasty. Yeah, spot on came and saved the day on that one as well. And then we use NC self storage to store our stuff even now um, so that you know, it's air conditioned, it's drive through, it's so clean and the facilities are great and the owners are fantastic too. So, um, so I'm definitely going to put a plug in for those businesses. Um, Anytime Fitness is another one. I used to go there. We can't go there now because we're in Germany, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, so go to bestofthepines.com and vote for your favorites out there. All right. So end of that plug. Okay. So now we're going to talk about staging kids bedrooms. Now I know you're probably thinking, oh God, my kids can be such a mess. And I know with little ones, it can be really difficult. Um, and they may not understand why all of a sudden you're cleaning up all their toys and the toys are all gone. Yeah, I know I had to do that for my kids. Um, or you have teenagers, maybe moody teenagers, and they're just notoriously messy. I get it. I have one of those too. Um, so yeah, so sometimes it's better just to rip off the band-aid and yeah, just, just clean it out. Um, and especially if you're tight on time and you have to get your house on the market real soon, you don't have a whole lot of time to do that. Um, it is August, right? Um, so a lot of people are, you know, already moving into their houses to get in there before the school year starts. But there are people that will be looking at houses in fall and you can get a really good, great house in the fall and sell it during that market too. talk to a real estate agent. They can totally help you out with that. Um, but we've actually sold our houses in October. Um, and got an offer within days or hours, depending on which house it was. Um, but it can totally be done. So as long as you stage it, get it photographed correctly, and have a great real estate agent to market your home, okay? Um, but basically, if you've got a short amount of time, need to get it on the market real soon, um, my best decluttering tip to get start cleaning is the hallway dump. If you did not hear my last... Um, Facebook Live or blog post about the floor de uh, four decluttering tips you can use right now. The hallway dump is my favorite. Um, it's the fastest way to get the stuff out of the room. And what I mean by that is you're going to take out everything that doesn't belong in that room. Um, I like to start with the top floor, if there is a top floor in your home, and work my way down and bring everything down. So I work one room at a time and I go through and do that. So let's talk about what things should be in a kid's bedroom um, and then talk about what shouldn't be. But things that should be in a kid's bedroom, obviously a bed, okay? Preferably made, needs to be made, must be made when it comes time for the pictures, okay? So take a look at their bedding and see if maybe, maybe they can use a new cover, um, a new um, comforter, whatever it is that they sleep under. 
Um, sometimes kids, you know, get hot, cold, whatever. Um, take a look at the bedding, and then that way, that's something you can take with you to your next home, okay? Um, so it's not just buying it to stage it, but take a look at it and see if maybe it's maybe looking a little rough or, you know, just kind of plain. Um, so take a look at the bedding, because um, that makes a difference. Um, definitely have a dresser or a chest of drawers, because you still need the stuff that's in there, right? And I don't want to hinder what you're gonna, how you're going to be living in that house when you stage it. So ideally, I know a lot of you may not like living in the house while it's being shown. I've done it each and every single time. Um, and while, yes, it creates some work, it can be done. And I've done it with three kids. And the way I've done it is that I've taken literally almost everything that they could play with just out, packed it out, removed it, so that when it came time for showings, um, I didn't have to clean it up because there wasn't much to clean or clean up, okay? Um, so a bed, a dresser or a chest of drawers, a nightstand with a lamp, um, or an alarm clock on there, maybe, you know, a little figurine, something like that, but nothing else on that nightstand. Glasses if they need it, you know, that kind of a thing. But otherwise, there shouldn't be stacks and stacks of books like my kids love to have on their nightstand. There shouldn't be too many toys on their crayons, you know, the types of things you find randomly on a nightstand. Yeah, um, so those nightstands should be pretty much clear of those kinds of things. Uh, if you have curtains or blinds that help with the color in the room, definitely use those to your advantage. Um, artwork, one to two pieces per wall. So I know kids love, my kids especially, love to hang up their certificates, diplomas, their presidential award from the last school year because it is August and they won a whole bunch of stuff in June, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> those have got to come down. Um, anything with their name on it, take those down. No trophies or anything like that. All those have got to go. Um, so artwork, one to two pieces per wall on when it comes to staging your kid's bedroom. And then one to two stuffed animals. I know, hold your breath, you're probably going, one to two stuffed animals, what? The kid has like a whole corner of them. I know, I get it. We're gonna reduce that amount. Pick one to two loveys that your child cannot live without, okay? The rest of them need to be packed away in boxes. Just get them out of the room, pull them out, put them in a toy chest someplace else. Um, again, it comes back to the less stuff you have out, the less stuff you have to clean before a showing, okay? And pick up and, and do all that stuff. You have many other rooms other than your child's bedroom to have to clean and, and pick up stuff, okay? So that's what I'm trying to do is save that sanity so that you don't have to deal with that, okay? Um, so what you, those are the things that you should have in a kid's bedroom. Now notice I didn't say things like toys, like doll houses. There should not be any Lego sets. Um, I mentioned no trophies, no certificates, laundry hamper, if you have one, just stick it in the closet, okay? Just put it away. Um, toys, cars, um, I know like little boys have those little trucks and things like that. No, none of that should be in there. Um, again, this is, we're trying to limit the amount of stuff they have and we're using maybe one or two pieces to help you bring color into the room and show people, yes, this is a kid's bedroom, there's a little truck on the nightstand, okay, that's fine. You know, R2-D2, my, one of my daughters has an R2-D2 um, clock. That's perfectly fine, okay? <laughs> so, um, so that's what I want to say when it comes to minimizing the things that should be in your kid's bedroom. Some rooms probably have a desk in there. I know some people that need to have a desk or, a com you know, for a computer to sit on there because if you're doing virtual learning, that's what you have. Um, <sighs> If it's a big enough bedroom that it could go in there easily, okay, you can put it in, in there, but again, you want to not have stacks and stacks of paper, books, those types of things um, on that desk. Otherwise, I would just pull it out. Just take it out, put it someplace else. Maybe there's a nook um, that they can put the computer on in a desk in some other part of the home, okay? It depends. Um, especially if, if you can do that for a little bit, especially when it comes to the pictures, do it for the photographs and then you can put it back in there if you need to because school starts in two weeks, okay? And you still haven't sold the house, right? I get it, okay. You still have to live there, I get it. Um, so give, let me give you some staging tips on when you do um, 
have to stage your kids room so we've talked about all the furniture that should be in there and the things that should not be in there um the bedding i mentioned earlier use that for the color pattern in your child's room um, especially if you're going to pick out something new um it can be like if your daughter loves unicorns then that's a pattern you can use or if your boy, little boy loves dinosaurs trucks you know those kinds of things a lot of them have lots of fun colors in them um, that you can use to help decorate the rest of the room um, like I said there was one dinosaur patterned um, comforter that I saw it was like a blue and green kind of like a not a neon green but kind of a sagey kind of a green it was like a fun kind of color um, you can totally put in there um, maybe a green little rug you know to help with the color to get the colors to come out and pop out a little bit more um, especially in the girls room they love pink rugs those are always fun or a pink lamp you know what I mean? Um, the room should probably be painted in a more neutral color. Now, I wouldn't necessarily do that for every single child's room. It really depends on the room. Um, if there are four different colored walls in one room, yeah, that's a little too much. We're going a little overboard. The camera, just when the photographer comes in there, will it'll fight the light and, and everything. And it's just, yeah, stick with one color, okay? And if it's a bright pink then you never know who's going to be moving in there they may have to repaint i get it i know that may not be your concern um but if you have like three walls that are gray and one pink one okay that's fine that'll work you know um and then use the color like i said for the accents like if you do have you want a, a you know a great green wall and then gray walls and the other three then you can have green curtains you know a green rug maybe you, your kid loves ninja turtles you know that, that's fantastic you know those are some great ways to bring out color in a room um if you do have a dresser we've talked about that as an essential piece of furniture in there make sure it's not cluttered with other things on top of there at a maximum i would probably put three items on there one in each corner and then one in the middle Okay, so it could be like a piggy bank, it could be a, a favorite figurine, maybe it's a little truck or a ballerina, you know, jewelry box, something like that. Okay, those are fine. But again, it should not be cluttered up there on the dresser or the chest of drawers. Okay. Um, the nightstand we talked about, uh, a lamp and two things. Okay. Um, closet should be neatly arranged. So if they open the doors, because buyers will look, they'll open up doors to all the closets and cabinets to see, well, is there something for me to hang everything? Or do I need to put a closet hanging system in there? What's going on? Um, so everything should be neatly arranged and hung. It shouldn't be packed in there too tight. Um, again, when I go through, and I, get, I could probably get this as a control freak, I get this. Um, uh, when my young kids were younger, especially, I would take out the items that were not season appropriate. So, for example, if it was winter and my little girl loved to wear dresses, especially no sleeve dresses, yeah, I would take them out of the closet and put it in storage bins because they're not appropriate for winter. I'm not going to, you know, allow her to wear that kind of a, a dress to school. She can wear a long sleeve one, sure, no problem, but not ones with no sleeves. And even some dresses you'll have to wear with thicker tights, right? So I, they're pre-approved mommy outfits even before they pull out of the closet. <laughs> no, I get it, I'm, I can control those things, right? So same idea here is you're in the summertime right now, you don't need the winter coats put in there, put them in a big Tupperware bins, put away in storage. Um, so you can still see t-shirts and shorts and things like that, maybe some jeans if it's starting to get cooler. Um, but otherwise, if you, as soon as you get into the winter, there should be no summer stuff, vice versa. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. So when it comes to a closet, those are, I have mommy approved outfits already based on the season. I know, just shoot me, got it. Um, and then another tip that you can use is easy is um, art over the bed. So if you have a headboard, or maybe if you don't have a headboard, even more so have, um, either a big canvas piece over the bed it could be metal artwork it could be a, a sunshine you know piece whatever okay something like that to draw your eye to to the bed and it frames it real nice as a focal point for the photographer when they take pictures of your home okay um so those are just some staging tips that you can use um 
And one of the main things I know, especially the little kids, when they realize that their stuff is gone, they've been packed away, yet some of it's still behind, believe me, it is gonna be like Christmas on the other end when you get to your new house. Um, because, and I've had to deal with this too, they're like, oh, where'd all my stuff go? I, I get it, I get it. But when they get to the other end, you will not see them for a few hours as they unpack their room and, un and find all their toys that they haven't seen in, what, a month, maybe, maybe less, depends. But it's like they haven't seen them in years, I swear. It it's like Christmas. Oh, I remember this, even though they really just saw it maybe a few weeks ago. <laughs> I know, it's funny. Um, but it's a great way to kind of remind them, hey, look, you know, you're going to see it on the other end. It's not, it's not gone forever, right? Okay, while there may be some things that you may decide, that is gone forever, that's on you. If you donate or sell something or throw it out because it's broken, that's on you, okay? All right, um, but I do recommend when you do have showings, make sure you put away any jewelry, um, iPods, iPads, any electronics, those little Game Boy type things, I'm dating myself, I know, Xboxes, you know what I mean. Those are easily lifted, can be picked up, so take them with you when you leave the house for the showing um, or hide it somewhere deep under the bed, I don't know, someplace. Just make sure it's not out, okay? That, that's all I ask, okay? Um, so one last thing I do want to cover um, is also throw pillows that you can use. I'm going to show you one of these here. This is my Beach Vibes pillow. I love this pillow because it has the blues and like the yellow in here. Um, you can use this too, especially when you have an older child because it's not a little one and they want to be a little more adult. You can totally use a pillow like that to help you decide on the color scheme. So maybe the bedding may be kind of a, a plain one color one. You can use the throw pillow to help you with that as well for the different color schemes. Maybe you want to have like a, a beachy vibe type in your room and that could be also for future, maybe the next bedroom, next house you move into and that's the theme you go with. Now you got it. You got it ready to go, right? So now you're ahead of the game. Okay, um, last thing I want to talk about are colors for the um, bedrooms. Now I know, we, like I mentioned, you want to stay with more neutral colors like grays or beiges, and I've talked about those kind of colors before too. Um, for a kid's bedroom, um, one of my favorites is from Benjamin Moore is Gray Owl. It's kind of a lighter color. Let me see if I can find that real quick. Um, and that is just another neutral kind of a thing that you can use to paint. And you can use that also for the next house you move into, um, because gray can go great with like a turquoise blue or a yellow or even a pink, you know? Um, oh, here it is. It's got it. Let's see if I can show you this one. I've got this little tag right here. This one on my finger. So that's Gray Owl from Benjamin Moore. It's a nice light gray color. You can use that for a nursery too um, if you don't know the sex of the baby yet and you want it, you're itching to get started. Yeah, um, so that's a great one. Um, you can use also, there's this one light pink one. Um, I had painted our three-year-olds at the time her bedroom pink. It turned out like Pepto-Bismol pink. It was so bright. Oh my gosh, I had to wear sunglasses to go in there. Um, but another light pink one is called Pink Bliss. And this is a great one also. It's a light pink, really, really light. So that way you can use it for um, a room if you're painting that too, or an accent wall if you want to do that. Um, if I talked about, let's see, beige. Um, kill em beige or like a Swiss coffee kind of a color. I don't know the name of that one. I think I actually was called Swiss coffee, come to think of it. Um, Edgecomb Gray is another one that's right here. I'm going to show you right there where my finger is. And that's by Benjamin Moore. And the one up here is Revere Pewter. That's a gray beige kind of a color, a grige, if you will. Um, so those are some great um, colors to use also as a base point for your room to keep it neutral because if you have multiple colors in a bedroom sometimes it gets overwhelming and then the camera gets just um, overtaken. The, one of the colors that I've seen and actually I've learned the hard way too is red is just really difficult for cameras to take in as a color uh, because there's so many um, reflective 
I guess, properties to it. It doesn't show up right until you actually come into the room because of the color and everything. It's just, so I would stay away from red if you can in a room, um, even dining rooms. I know we're not talking about that. We're talking about kids' rooms, but um, red just doesn't show up right. Sometimes it kind of turns orangey. Um, it, it, yeah, I would kind of stay away from red in just in general, especially in a kid's room, okay? So those are just some things I'm gonna talk about. So I talked about what things should be in a kid's bedroom, what should not be in a kid's bedroom. I gave you some tips that'll hopefully help you get started. Um, and then some colors, room colors that you can use, whether you use it now or maybe you use it, use it in the next house that you move into. And if you learned everything and, 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 and soaked in all the information I just gave you, but you're just not getting it and it's still just not clicking, I would love to help you out. I can still help you stage your home online. I have an online calendar that you can take a look on my website, bluediamondstaginganddesign.com. And you can go there and find my calendar, pick a date and a time that works best for you so that we can meet up, whether it's online through WhatsApp, Skype, or whatnot, or even just send me the pictures and I can call you and we can discuss what needs to happen in each and every single room. So I would love to help you out if you need that help. So if you have any other questions, let me know. Um, put them down below and I'll talk to you later. Have a great day.